Another design principle on the internet that's equally important to the end-to-end -end principle but doesn't really get as much attention is something known as the robustness principle. And particularly if you're going to design and implement computer software, the robustness principle is something that's worth paying attention to. And it's worth thinking about how this helped the internet grow and the internet thrive. So what is the robustness principle? Remember that a protocol is this highly structured communication between two computers that are communicating over the internet. So computer A and computer B are sending packets back and forth to each other, uh, but frequently, even if they're speaking the same protocol, they're supposed to be speaking the same language. Um, the protocol implementation on A and the protocol implementation on B will have been designed by different people. Different human beings who make mistakes and don't always do things perfectly. And so what will happen is, you know, uh, the person who wrote the software stack on A got a copy of the protocol. And they read the protocol, and the protocol is in English, and it says, you must do this, and you must do this, and here is how you structure the data, and things like that. And they did their best to try to implement the protocol to the spec. The person who wrote the uh, protocol stack or the, who implemented this protocol on computer B did the same thing. But again, these protocols are written in human language and despite the fact that the protocol specifications try to be very, very specific about exactly how each computer should respond when they're communicating to each other, people make mistakes. And so what happens, what the robustness principle states is that protocol implementations should try to be as accommodating as possible. So if A, let's say that A sends, let's say that there's a packet structure here and let's say that there's one field, uh, there's two fields in it and one of these fields is typically not used by the protocol right now but maybe let's say that field has a default value of zero. So most of the time it's zero. Um, but maybe what happens is sometimes computer B sends a packet for the protocol where this unused field is set to one. So here is an example of a case where the protocol implementation on A, you know, it shouldn't reject this packet because B did something a little bit weird. The protocol implementation should try to do the right thing whenever possible. The protocol implementation should be as flexible and as accommodating as possible. So if A can tell what B is trying to accomplish, a should try to participate and help B accomplish what it wants. Same thing with B. So what this means, and this is an interesting way to think about writing software, right, is to try to figure out, you know, when possible, handle errors gracefully, handle unexpected conditions gracefully. You know, it, it, again, if there's some extra information in the packet or something like this, who cares? If you can figure out what to do, try to participate in the protocol, try to play along. Um, this is a core principle that allows all these different protocol implementations that have been built by different people to interoperate and to power the internet together.